the secret to feeling it real. I literally tell you guys in your statements, questions, and phrases to put the feeling in there. Neville also did the same thing when he told you to say, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful makes you feel good. And if you feel good, feeling is the secret to be able to get your manifestation. So what does actually putting the feeling and why I'm happily versus it is wonderful do to help you upscale your manifesting? This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. If you are new here, thank you for subscribing, smashing the like button, sharing my videos. If you're already a subscriber and you do that for me, you are the bomb and I love you. I am the best life coach with a 99.6% success rate in getting people back together with the love of their life. It's not the only thing I do though. If you would be interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, joining my paid Facebook group, upscaling your money with Delivery Dawn, you all know the links are in the description below. So let's talk about, isn't it wonderful and why am I happily? When you are going about your day, you don't even realize a lot of times how you answer a question. Somebody says, how are you feeling? Somebody said, how's your day going? Somebody asks um, how, you know, life is in general. You know, uh, not so good. Don't feel good. Yeah, no, not at all. It's all, life is lousy. You're literally using your words, even if you don't say, I feel sick. You're feeling that in your body. If you are using words like incredible, wonderful, fantastic, amazing, you are literally putting good words into your body. So we've gone through with the success. You have to feel successful in order to manifest. And in order to feel successful, you need confidence that you are successful. So break this down. In order to feel it real, you just tell yourself how you feel. So I want you guys to coin this. How you doing? I'm great. How's life? It's great. Really? Because yesterday you were dealing with the drama. Yeah, I'm done with the drama. I, I, I'm building a great life. So life is great. So I have clients all over the world and my clients get success because they put in their feeling how they want to feel about things. And they also say that they are successful. Well, how does success feel to you? Like, do you look at what you're doing? Because so many people are so miserable that they get to the point where they're suicidal because they've come to manifesting to fix a specific thing in their life and it messed up everything. I commented on a post where somebody said that they've been imagining for three years with Neville's techniques and they've gotten nothing out of three years of imagining. And somebody got triggered and said that my comment was very triggering of, and that I shouldn't have done that. Well, here's the thing that I told them. Maybe don't look at this differently. And that's what I try to get y'all to do. Look at this differently. You spent three years studying Neville. You've learned a lot. You might not have had success, but you still learned a lot. Then I said, again, let's look at this differently. Maybe imagining isn't your manifesting routine. So let's try, isn't it wonderful? Because that is a Neville's phrase. How is that triggering? So I got told the other day, because I always make a comment that I have um, downturned eyes, downturned lips, um, that I have resting bitch face. And I say it all the time, it's resting bitch face. It's not that I don't smile, it's resting bitch face. And with that, somebody said, you do not have that. She said, you have a, a happy face and out, you know, uh, and I'm like, no, really? Cause like, she's like, no, it's genetics. My stuff turns down, not a big deal to me. But she's like, you have a happy face. 
And I thought that was really the amazing compliment. And she said, you always look to the good in life and you have a happy face. And she said, you also choose to be happy. And I do. So when somebody comes at me and has no clue who I am, I understand that. But let me tell you who I am. I am an abused child who was trauma bonded to her ex-husband by the time she was five. And I have complex PTSD. I have anxiety. I suffer from depression just like everybody else does. I've also been assaulted twice. So I've had for what the most part people would say a really crappy life. And yet I'm sitting here and somebody's telling me, you have a happy face. So my ex used to say, you always have to be the cheerleader. You're so positive about everything. My life was not the best. But when I got to go out when I was a kid and go for a walk, they kicked us out of the house. Because, you know, Gen X, they kicked us out of the house, told us to leave them alone, come back home when the streetlights come on. They wouldn't even have any clue as to where we were. I was glad to be kicked out of the house because that meant I wasn't going to be abused. It literally meant I wasn't going to be abused. And then I get trauma bonded to somebody else. So I have complex PTSD, which is basically traumatized in your childhood. Your brain does not develop like a normal brain would. So you don't think like a normal person does. Well, then you get traumatized and you rewire your neural pathways in your brain because of that trauma. And then you're walking around going, I'm anxious, I'm nervous, I can't even leave the house. And you're saying these things out loud. And it's sending it out into the one consciousness. You're also hearing it. You cannot literally square your shoulders, put your chin up, get that chin up, and say, I'm depressed. Do I sound depressed? No. I guess the one good thing that my stepmother did is she used to poke us in the back. She like literally at the base of your spine, she would jab her finger into your back. If you were slouching like that, she would jab it and you would like literally sit up straight. So when I leave the house, it doesn't matter if I'm crying. It doesn't matter if I'm upset. It doesn't matter what's going on. I change my body structure. I pull my shoulders up. I make sure I look presentable and I go out the door. When I'm walking through a store, if I'm going into a restaurant, my shoulders are up, my head is up and I'm walking. So I look like I have confidence. I look like I am, you know, the, the bomb. However you want to say that. And I did that because I had to find a reason to continue to move forward. It was either not be here on this planet anymore or find a way to be happy. So it didn't matter how many times I got yelled at. It didn't matter how much stuff my ex threw at me because I would walk off, I would rant. I'd call him every name in the book in my head. I, if he wasn't in earshot, I would even say it out loud. I'd stomp my feet and then I would be like, but I choose to be happy. I choose to be happy because I choose to be happy. But I choose to be happy because I choose to be happy. So my childhood was made up of basically three words that started my sentences, right? It was stop. So stop whatever you're doing, but I'm going to change your life for the better because I'm the best life coach and you are a Susie success story. So anybody would come at me with something and I would counter it with stop because stop saying that because you're creating it in your reality. Stop because you know you're going to get paid on Friday and everything's going to be fine. Stop because you can change your life for the better. Stop doing that. But no matter what, I promise you, I'm going to be here for you. When you are using those three words and it comes at you and you're, you're being yelled at, you're posting on these social media groups about how awful things are going in life. Those people want you to do that. 
because they want to make sure that you feel awful. So when Neville said, clean up your mental diet, he was talking about your thinking and what you were saying in public to people. Now, public to people today is writing. And how many people use speech to text? Guilty as charged. And then I also apologize and tell my clients that I am using speech to text because I grew up with a typewriter and you hit the enter key, which would return it to the next line at the beginning of the side of your page. And I still do that. I hit the enter key on my keyboard and it'll send the message before I had a chance to proofread it. So sometimes you get a little crazy messages from me. And some of my clients think it's absolutely adorable because they have to think to figure out what I'm saying. So it gets them out of their head. So sometimes I think there's no coincidences and that message was sent because they needed something. And I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I sent somebody a message the other day and I said, I can't speak and I can't type. I best go back to bed. <laughs> and she sent back, LOL. When you are consciously creating your life, and I cannot stress this enough, your brain is made up of three parts. It is made up of the frontal cortex, which is your consciousness. It is made up of your subconscious, which is the right brain and the left brain. So this is about a quarter of your brain. The other three quarters is divided in half to you know, fill out the left and the right side of your brain. Your brain's job is to process stuff. So you're speaking out loud, that's your consciousness. You're thinking, your subconscious, because now you said something out loud, your subconscious is listening for that word, whatever you just said, and then it's gonna pull up every single memory that you have had in your life related to that. So you type into Google search bar, isn't it wonderful? And you're gonna get a lot of Neville Goddard stuff. But you're typing into Google search bar, how do I get my ex back? How do I get out of debt? Instead of, why am I happily married? Why am I a millionaire? How do I become a millionaire? You're, most of the time, we're, we're focusing on the wrong thing. Well, that's the same thing we're doing with our feelings. We're telling people automatically. We're at work and we're miserable because we have a boss that's not so nice. We have coworkers that we're stuck working with that we don't want to be friends with and they want to be our bestie and we're like, ew, get away. So what do you do? You start telling people. If you gotta work it out and write it down on a piece of paper, do this, sit down and literally say, isn't it wonderful? But you can't answer a question that somebody throws with you at, isn't it wonderful? So you have to go to the I am. What do you wanna say after that? Cause you can say, I am wonderful. Wonderful is a good feeling. I'm fantastic. I am incredible. I am amazing. Oh my gosh, I am so amazing. My life just keeps getting better and better every day. Try this, but don't just say I'm gonna do it. Because for those of you who don't like the word spoiled, what if you said everybody is nice to me? Isn't it wonderful everybody is nice to me? Nice is a good feeling. So now people are gonna come yelling at you. Why is everybody nice to me? Because I'm a Susie success story. So now you spoke success into your question. You wanna make it a phrase. Everybody is nice to me because I'm a Susie success story. What did you just do? You did a phrase and you spoke success into people being nice to you. You want to get out of being depressed. Take that word out of your dictionary and don't say when somebody says, how are you doing? Oh, I'm depressed. Your shoulders go down, your head goes down, your voice gets lowered. You look at the floor. How many times do we see people that we walk through the stores and their heads are down like this? 
They're sitting in a restaurant and they're not looking around at the people in the restaurant. Their heads are down. Even if they're not on their phone, their head is down. It's like, please don't look at me. Like, don't look at me because, you know, things aren't going well in my life and I don't want to be seen. I want you to raise your head up. The only way to dial up your happy meter and drastically change your life for the better is to use phrases that empower you, questions that give you better answers, statements that create. I am that I am. So I am great that I am great. Why am I great? Because I'm great. Isn't it wonderful? I'm great. Most people need to start by answering their questions. Because when you answer your questions, you are sending out constantly what you want. So if you are sending out, I did self-love and I got my specific person back. I did self-concept and I got my specific person back. They sent out, they did something for themselves and they got this in return. So their words are saying, I did this and I got that. So you're saying, I got this because I'm a success story. And by putting that out there constantly, you're a success story. So words matter. Why is my YouTube channel growing by leaps and bounds? Because I am a success story. Why is my YouTube channel doubled its subscribers? Because I'm a success story. Why is my YouTube channel getting more likes, comments, views? Because I'm a success story. Why have I doubled all of my numbers on YouTube? Because I'm a success story. That's what you're sending out, success. So when Neville was saying, isn't it wonderful, you were successfully sending out, you felt good. When I tell you to say, I have, or I am, put in a feeling, isn't it wonderful? I have an amazing life. Isn't it wonderful? I receive wonderful things every day. Isn't it wonderful? Good things are always happening for me. So you're saying it's wonderful and good things are happening to you. You're having an amazing life. Isn't it wonderful? Life is getting better and better every day. Isn't it wonderful? I'm married to my specific person. So Neville taught this lady who wanted to meet, went out on a date with this guy, and then she had to move, she had to change phone numbers. She had no idea how he was gonna contact her. So she walked around by Neville's teachings, he told her, say, isn't it wonderful? And she used the person's name. So she literally would walk around in my celebrity crush again. Love Jason Momoa. Isn't it wonderful? I am in the most incredibly romantic relationship with Jason Momoa. This woman said, isn't it wonderful? I am Mrs. J.E. So isn't it wonderful? I'm Mrs. J.M. Why am I happily married to J.M.? because I'm a success story. So I'm creating success. I'm creating feelings of wonderful. I'm creating happily married, incredible romantic relationship marriage, all with using my words to tell my body how to feel. And I want you to test this. Don't just go, oh, you know, whatever. I want you to test this. I want you to go stand in front of your mirror and I want you to look at yourself and say, I am so excited. Like I am so excited. My life is getting better and better every day. I am so excited. My life is getting better and better every day. I am so excited that my specific person is right now today, my husband what, or wife. Sorry. Don't mean it. I, I love you guys. Then what I want you to do is I want you to try this. Just say it. I'm married to so-and-so. I'm married to my specific person. I am married to Jason Momoa. Notice the difference in your tone when you just say, I am married to this person. Now, 
you're out. And somebody says, who's that gorgeous guy with you? Oh, that's my husband. That's my better half. That's my ball and chain. Because motorcycle, growing up, that's what they called the, the old lady, the ball and chain. Uh, my grandparents, it was mama. <laughs> if mama's happy, everybody's happy. So, no, I don't want to be a juice. That's my wonderful husband. That's my incredible husband. That's my amazing husband. How are you going to introduce them to your friends and your family? Oh, that's my other half. That's my roommate. That's my friend. Like, how are you going to? And they're like, oh, is that the boyfriend? No, we're just friends. That's what you're saying when you're doing these titles. So Neville even said, I was imagining laying in my bed. My wife was asleep in the other bed. Notice he gave her a title, my wife. And then he probably said, thank you, father. My wife is sleeping in the bed next to me. Or it's done. My wife is sleeping in the bed next to me. Or isn't it wonderful? My wife is sleeping in the bed next to me. Why am I happily married? Because my wife is sleeping in the bed next to me. I'm happily married. My wife is sleeping in the ne bed next to me because I am a success story. Like, if somebody would have told me 30 years ago that I would be sitting here doing a YouTube video, I would have laughed at them. Number one, I didn't have the confidence. Number two, YouTube didn't even exist 30 years ago. Or maybe it did and I just didn't know it. But I remember when we had the internet that was a box that went on your TV. Like literally, it went on your TV. And then we got the computers and now we have cell phones and tablets. Like life has changed so much. But we get into a rut and our words create our reality. And the more you listen to things and you hear things and you see things, your focus goes to that. So somebody is sick and you're like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't get sick. Instead, I'm great. I'm so sorry to hear. But you know what? You're going to be getting better and better every day. I just know you're going to get better and better every day. My daughter and her bestie, they were constantly saying she's not getting better, but she's not getting worse. They stuck me in just being. And I'd be like, stop saying that because you're not allowing me to get healthy. And then I was really like, stop. Don't say that again. Because I want to create being healthy. Start saying she's getting healthy because she's getting healthy. She's getting healthy, but she's getting healthy. So that you're creating what you want to feel. You want to feel healthy, you have to speak healthy. You want to feel happy, you have to speak happy. You want to feel excited, you have to speak excited. You cannot sit there and not have conversations. And I know so many people are afraid to speak out loud anymore. They're afraid to think. But we do it naturally every day. You work in a call center, you got to talk to people on the phone. So there's a good place to start practicing. Somebody says, how are you? I am great. Thank you for asking. I am so excited to be able to help you on this call today. What can I start with? I was in telemarketing at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm already starting to call people and this guy answers the phone kind of groggy. And I said, good morning. And the guy said, this is going to be an incredibly cheerful call. Are you always this chipper this early in the morning? Majority of the time, 90% of the time, I am this chipper. This morning, I woke up and I was blue. I was feeling really funky and blue. And I had the kids. I was working on some stuff. So I went and quarter, recorded a quick little sub on my app where I could hear my words because I'll have the app where I can't hear my words. So I had to hear my words. And I put on some ocean music on, on YouTube and I had the words going. I turned it down so I could barely hear it. And I went about doing my work. And within an hour, I started to feel better. 
because I put in those feeling words. I was relieved. I was excited. I was healthy. And when I did that, I noticed that my energy levels picked up. And the more my energy picked up, the better I felt. I noticed I went from the slouched position working at the table because I'm in the living room. The kids are in the living room. I'm at my, my, my other table, the, the art table, um, which is actually my dining room table. And I'm over there and I'm working and I noticed all of a sudden I started sitting a little taller. I started typing more confidently. I started being just in the moment and be like, wow, like I feel amazing. Like this sub really worked listening to this and hearing it. Now you don't always have to hear the words on a sub, but you have to hear something. Because when I make my subs, you don't hear the words, but your ears hear the music. And I use upbeat music. So I love the ocean and I wanted to go to the ocean and I can't go to the ocean just yet. So I put on my sub, I put on my, my words and I put the ocean music on in the background. And I just diligently went about my day. And as I was doing it, I was like, you know what? I'm a success story. I really am. So I've had my channel for three years and I have worked from home now since February 17th of 2020. I've kept the lights on. Everything is working. There might have been some good ones with my business and some not so good ones with my business, but I turned it around. And even me who teaches you guys didn't realize I wasn't saying I was successful. I sent out a screen uh, Snapchat to a bunch of my friends. I was working on my YouTube channel and I took a picture of it. And, and I said, uh, I got a bunch of responses back and the responses were amazing. Like they were absolutely amazing. Like I was like, wow. I mean, I didn't realize that people saw me that way because I'm just like you, I'm human. And I look in my mirror and I think the same thing sometimes. Oh, you know, this isn't as, it's not like, oh, yeah. you go brush your teeth and you're in that mirror. Instead of jumping up and down and going, I'm so excited. Imagine your specific person records that self-love that everybody preaches that you have to do. So your specific person does a video for you. And your specific person says, Good morning, beautiful, or hello, beautiful. I just wanted you to know that I love you. You are so beautiful. You are so amazing. You are so successful. You are such a gift to myself and the world. I hope your day today is absolutely positively amazing and that everybody is nice to you and treats you like the queen you are. And if it is a guy, the king that they are. How would you feel? You get up in the morning, you're in the bathroom, you're doing your hair, you're washing your face, doing whatever your morning routine is on, and you have your tablet sitting there or your phone, and your specific person is telling you that. You're gonna walk out with a big smile on your face. And then somebody's gonna go, how long is this? How, how they hear you one day listening to it. Like, how often do you listen to this? And you're like, oh, I don't know, once in a while. And then they find out that you've been listening to it every day, every time you get down, every time you have a bad feeling, every time you think the world is caving in on you, you go put your headset in and you put that on and you listen to it. How's that gonna make you feel? Because that person holds a lot more power on you because they're coming to you and they're telling you what you want to hear. When we stand in front of the mirror, we judge ourselves too harshly. And that's why we have to say, this is great. This is amazing. This is wonderful. This is incredible. I am so excited. If you think about your life like you are a kid opening up your presents on Christmas day. You're so excited. You wait for this day all year long. 
and you finally get there and you start ripping into your presence and you got everything you wanted. That's how I want you to feel the majority of the time. I know there's going to be bumps and bruises along the way, but the more you tell yourself, life is great. I feel great. Everything is wonderful. It just keeps getting better and better. Not how good does it get? Show me that it gets better. Show me life is getting better and better every day. Show me people are being nicer to me every day. Why am I so happy with my life? Because people are nice to me and I'm a Susie success story. So we just asked why we were happy with life and we said, because people are nice and I'm a Susie success story. Do this every single day and watch what people do. They'll open doors, they'll hold doors. Magically, somebody will pull out of the parking spot and you get the very first one right by the door when it's pouring down rain. Life can be magical, but you gotta say it. I love you guys. You have an absolutely positively amazing day. Leave me a swan today if you got this far in the video. And as always, I love you. Now let's go see what the clicker is going to do because, you know, we have that wonderful, charming, love-hate relationship and sometimes he works for me and sometimes he doesn't. But, you know, it's just a little piece of life and I don't have to fix it. But if I was happy with my clicker, he would always work.